welcome. My name is Ava and this is A to Z Crochet. Today, I don't really have a full knitting podcast for you here, but I thought maybe instead I could do a little bit more inspiration. And I also have a fantastic um, op shop haul to show because I'm obsessed and I need to tell everyone in the world about it. And I thought I could yeah, maybe focus a little bit on more what is inspiring me at the moment and kind of walk through some patterns that I'm looking forward to making. And I have a few acquisitions as well, which I'm really excited to share. Okay, so to start, I do actually have one finished project, um, which I worked on. Currently, I'm in the Netherlands, um, staying at my Oma's house. And on the flight here, I made up the... Hipster hat by Petite Knit using some acrylic yarn from Spotlight. And actually no, it's a hundred percent wool, but it's it's not it's not very nice. Um but it was it was fun. That was my first time knitting on a plane. I had no problems. It was super easy, but I actually was very tired, so I didn't really get much of it done. And I haven't actually weaved in the final end, but that's okay. Um, I don't, I don't really like wearing a beanie ever, but I thought, you know, as a knitter, have to make one before I die. And I thought, might as well just get it out of the way at the beginning. And, you know, for a beanie, I think it's pretty good. I, I like how the decreases look, um, but I do think it looks a little bit stupid on me, but let's see, it's, it's Especially not it with the braids, but anyway, that is that is done. I've I can tick that off my list, and maybe I can give it to someone else for Christmas or something like that after I've woven in the ends. And so quickly, just kind of it's kind of like a whip as well as an acquisition. So when I was in Poland, I went to this beautiful yarn store, and I mean, in Australia, we there's no Sadness Garn, none of these like European yarn brands. So I was kind of in heaven seeing all these yarns I hadn't seen before. And I couldn't help myself but pick up a few, a few, like, few varieties of them. So I, actually, I only got two and I don't think I actually got enough yarn to finish off the project that I have in mind. But I thought I would just get it now. And since I'm in the Netherlands, I probably have pretty easy access to getting some more. So I'm not worried, not worried about, about that at all. But I got some double Sunday, some double Sunday. At first, I thought it wasn't actually that soft. But now that I've actually been knitting something with it, it's definitely, definitely a lot more softer than whatever this is. Um, and it's so like plush and like, Oh, I just want to squeeze it. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then I'd also had my eye on some of the Sandiscan line yarn, which is has like the linen and the cotton. And because I've been wanting to make the Lulu shorts by Le Poul for the longest time, but I haven't had any access to that yarn, especially, oh, well, maybe I have, but not in the color that I want. So let me just grab that and I will show you what it looks like. Okay, I'm back. So, there she is. It is in the pink. I'm not sure what number it is. Maybe 4626 is the color. And I just think it's exactly the color that Le Poul uses um, for the shorts. And I think it's just the best color. I'm not sure why you would go past this. Um, but I'm really excited to make some shorts out of linen because I mean, in Australia, it's too hot for any, literally any other kind of um, material. So I bought a few of these ones and I think I'm gonna make, make it up when I get back home because I'm not really in the mood to make some shorts right now because I have actually been working on a project with my double sunday um so 
I have been making the scallop jacket using that yarn and this is how far I have so far how far I have got so far and it's looking awesome I love the color I had originally planned to make it in black but as I was in the yarn store I was just I was just sitting there and I was looking at the colors and I was looking at the black and I was just like it's so boring I don't think I think the finished object would be so nice to have in your wardrobe but I think just like thinking about having to knit up black for for like months of my life I couldn't could bring myself to do it and I've just been seeing so many jumpers in this like lime green in, in the shops I was I was I was in the city and I was in some some store and there was this jumper literally in this color and I almost bought it I almost bought it but then I was like no because I can make this myself and I can make it into a really cute cardigan and so that's what I've been working on I feel like I've had the cardigan the cardigan rush right now that's basically all I want to make except for obviously the very long list of everything else I really want to make but anyway, yes, that was so exciting. I loved picking that yarn up. I I got it while I was solo traveling and I had to carry around an extra bag. And then actually all the clothes that I bought as well, I had to buy another bag so I could bring them around with me, which was a little bit of a pain, but definitely worth it when you see what I got. So yes, maybe, maybe now I'll kind of walk through what my plans are not necessarily like set in stone but just pieces that are definitely inspiring me right now and some which I have been very close to casting on but just haven't just yet but I'll just set up my laptop and come back okay I'm back got my laptop set up and let's go through some of the pieces that are definitely inspiring me at the moment and basically I really want them in my wardrobe and they're in my queue. I haven't necessarily thought about yarn for all of these but I'm pretty sure I will eventually make most of these ones up. And so to start I have the Align set and I literally just stumbled across it yesterday. And it's just kind of been on my mind. Can't stop thinking about it. I really love the colors that the designer used um, for this piece. And it's in brioche. And I've never, never done that before. And I think this would be an awesome way to try and learn this new technique. It's a bit like intimidating. So I'm not necessarily sure I want to make like a full oversized sweater using that technique. Rather, I think, I mean, surely a set would take that much time but maybe I could just make the skirt first or the sweater we'll see we'll see what happens um but yeah I really love the contrast stitch I think it's such a unique feature and it's just been on my mind and I thought I would tell you all about it the next item is the Deegan flower power pullover and this one as well I can't stop thinking about when I was in the yarn store, I was tossing up whether I should purchase yarn for the scallop jacket or this piece. But again, I have ne I've never really done Instasia before, so the thought of a new technique it kind of kind of scared me a little bit. But I really I love the flower motif on this one, and it's just it's so stunning, so stunning. I think. I've seen seen some people make it up in some other colors. I've seen it in a blue, like a kind of not not navy, more like cobalt, and I think that would be really fun. I always find myself, I mean, apart from my hand knit sweaters, all my sweaters before the ones that I would wear again and again, they were always navy blue, which is not my favorite color at all. But I just I just seem to wear them the most, so. Maybe I should start 
making mine up so I'll actually wear them not that I don't actually wear my jumpers but just so that maybe I'd wear them more I'm not sure the next pattern that has been on my mind is vest number eight by my favorite things now I've seen I've seen it before and I have not liked it I have not liked it at all uh, I think it looks like a little bit like my grandpa would have worn it especially in the gray it just wasn't really speaking to me and I've been I've been wanting to make a slip over for the longest time but I always find that I'm not a big fan of it oversized and I'm not a big fan of it cropped and I'm just like unable to find like the sweet spot in the middle and until now I had I had definitely like crossed vest number eight off like oh, I'm not gonna be making that but I saw on Instagram the other day um, someone had made it up a little a little bit cropped but it was still like full length and they had made it using like this same color and all of a sudden something changed in me and now I think I need it and I, I need it not necessarily in the green but definitely definitely a nice color um, definitely a bright color anyway I thought I thought it looked so lovely on the person who made it and I'm convinced I'm convinced that's gonna be my slipover and maybe I will make it when I get back home although it's gonna be summer hmm. it's like it's difficult knowing that I don't have that much time until I have to go back to summer and so I've got all this like motivation to cast on lots of winter knits because it's it's getting to be winter here in the Netherlands but knowing that I'll have to like finish them off in an Australian summer is is kind of like making me take a step back and I guess that's probably another reason why I chose to work on the cardigan rather than the flower pullover just because it might be a little bit nicer to finish if I don't get it done over here okay so the next one I thought I just quickly brush on the scallop jacket okay so the scallop jacket just gonna put it out there I think it's a timeless timeless silhouette cardigans I love wearing them they're good for Australian weather too when it's when it's winter because it's never actually that cold um, and so you're supposed to the, the pattern recommends that you hold a mohair with fingering but being being sensible I said no I said no no to the mohair because it's not it's not very wearable for me I did recently just make up my very first mohair jumper I did the Ingrid sweater by petite knit and it pains me but it's really it was a mistake I shouldn't have put the mohair in there it feels beautiful and it looks lovely and honestly it's great great for being in Europe but no I think no more mohair for me it's just it's sad I know it's so sad but I I can't go through the heartbreak of not being able to wear my pieces so I'm I'm taking that one off maybe when if I move somewhere but right now no mohair and so I'm just using obviously the double Sunday which is a DK and I'm just holding that single and I really like the the kind of the drape I don't know it has I'm just using I'm using the four millimeter needles and it's all a bit bunched up right now but the raglan increases they're looking fine nothing but good things to say about it currently although it's not working up that quickly it's not working up that quickly but that's a me problem and i should just be enjoying the process so that's fine so in general i would say my knitting goals are to finish the Field of Sunflower Socks by Stone Knits, which is a colorwork sock, and I have been working on it 
for over a year I have done like five versions of it and it's still just like not working how I want it to so goal number one is finish those goal number two is to make a knit dress and this knit dress it definitely needs to be wearable for me but I don't necessarily want it to be a summer knit just because I don't love working with like cotton that much I know I am making up those cotton shorts but but we let's not talk about that and so I was looking I was looking through Instagram as I do and I came across this version um, of Missany Accomplished, which is a sweater pattern. However, this person had lengthened it and made it into a dress. And I can't stop thinking about it. I love the color that they used. It is fantastic, fantastic. Um, I mean, yeah, what else is there to really say? It's, I think like potentially, you know, I'll make up the sweater because I mean, it's cute. It's giving Charlie Brown. I love it. And, um, and you know, I could just like give, give it a go of lengthening the body. And you know, if it doesn't, doesn't work the way I want it to necessarily, I could always just leave it as a sweater. Maybe make a matching skirt. I'm not sure, but this, this idea is definitely like gonna be put into action I think definitely in winter next year so like mid mid year and I think I'd want to do it do it just as it was starting to get, get a little bit cold because it's gonna be it's gonna be a big big job as well as being quite hot probably but I think it kind of it doesn't look like it would be too hot, especially, I don't know, if I make the right fibre choice. Obviously, no mohair in there. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, that's just something I've been thinking about quite heavily. And I do wish I could be making it right now. But I think not just yet, but soon. Soon. Okay, while I'm on the whole dress, dress idea, I've also seen this other project of it's a drops design and this person has like adjusted it quite significantly and just created this fantastic fantastic summer dress and now this is something I think I can definitely work on as soon as I get home even though it is it is a dress but you know I know I know I know I said I don't like cotton but if I got this if I got this final product, it would be worth the hassle. It would be great. Um, and yeah, it's beautiful. And the um, the person who made it left really, um, really comprehensive notes on the changes that they did. So I think once, once I become more confident in like making my own modifications, I am definitely going to be making this one up. I also just love the colours that they chose. It's so, so beachy, so chic. I think it's fantastic. I'm not necessarily sure what yarn I would be using yet, but, but I love the colour combination and I think I would want to do something similar with the stripes as well. But yeah, obsessed. Okay, quickly thought I would just talk briefly about the Lulu shorts, which are the ones that I'm planning on making using this beautiful yarn. I've just been on the hunt for the perfect shorts for a really long time. I always find that they they just don't really sit that nicely. And I just, something about the way that these are shaped, how they kind of like flared at the end. I had a bit of trouble finding like really good photos of how these will look when you're like standing up they all seem to be kind of like kind of um uh kind of posed quite a bit but I think I'm gonna take the risk because I mean basically all the shorts patterns I can find are always so posed it's really difficult to see if they're actually very flattering or not 
and I think I'm just going to take the risk for this one and maybe use like the knowledge I gain from making this pattern and hopefully I could try and make some of my own adjustments if it's not necessarily working out the way I want. But yeah, I'm keen to cast these on as soon as I finish my cardigan, they're next. Okay, I have to talk about it. The seashell set. It, ever since it came out, ever since it was released, I'm pretty sure I heard Tiffany from Typical Bliss talking about this pattern and I have not been able to stop thinking about it either. However, it's kind of a similar problem where not that many people have made it and those who have, have actually not necessarily had the greatest things to say about it, especially with the top not really having any any shaping, which they found didn't necessarily flatter. And so I've kind of been holding off on knitting this one up until I just get a few more opinions about it. And the just like, it looks so nice in the really posed photos, but I am super interested to know what it looks like when just like on the day to day, because I think it would take a really long time to make and it would be so disappointing if it just wasn't, wasn't really that flattering or didn't look very good. And so I'm just, you know, I'm leaving it, leaving it some time, just kind of letting it, letting it stew a little bit just to make sure that I'm a hundred percent. Oh, that I'll that I'll be happy with the final product, um, and so I'm just waiting until a few more people make it. But I am thinking about it. I've been thinking about it for a very long time. I love the color that the original designer made it in. I think it's so beautiful. But probably, knowing me, I would have to do it in a bright color. That's that's just what I do, um, maybe, or maybe, maybe in a, I saw someone make it in, like begin to make it in red and that looked so, so fantastic, but maybe a navy blue, maybe, I'm just going to leave it, give it some, give it some more time and come back to it when I'm back in Australia, because you know, it looks perfect for the beach. It looks so good. Yeah. Okay. That is all the patterns that I have been obsessively thinking about for potentially up to a year. So that is kind of a little bit of what I've been working on and a bit of my inspirations that I've been thinking about. And so now I... I would love to just show you some of the clothes that I got when I was in Poland, starting off with the Adidas jacket that I'm wearing. I was, I was just talking when I was at the hostel, I was just talking to someone being like, yeah, I need, I need that Adidas jacket that everyone's been wearing. And I spoke it into existence. Okay. Let me start from the beginning. It was like my last day in Krakow and I, I was just walking around the streets. I thought I would just do one last like, you know, loop of the town. And I was headed kind of towards the castle and I was walking by this one shop and it was like secondhand clothes and I could just tell it was gonna be good, but it was about like 9.30 and it hadn't opened yet. And so I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'll just, I'll give it some time. I'll wait for it. And I went and got a coffee or something. And when I came back, it was, it was an amazing store. It was, it just had basically everything I had been like thinking about. I had been hoping that one day I could own. They had it all and I had to buy a new bag so I could bring it back home with me. And now I just feel like complete in my, in my fashion, my fashion journey. But obviously I won't be complete until I finish my scallop jacket and my shorts and all the pieces that I mentioned. But definitely getting closer. So let me show you what I got. So number one, this 
Adidas jacket. You know, I think she could be a fake. I don't really know how to tell, but the zipper's kind of munted. Um, but, I mean, it's got pretty, like, good quality hardware, and it just, it fits perfectly. I think... I used to be a hater. I used to be a hater of these jackets, and my boyfriend has one, and I was like, why are you wearing that? It's hideous. But I've come around. It's really comfy. It's really comfy. So then, next, I got the most amazing two like like plaid plaid skirts. This one, she's green, stunning. And then this one, which okay, it's a little bit broken, but I think I can fix it because all I need to do is sew on sew on another one of these. It's just it's just missing one, but we look at this it's literally she's pleated full length maybe not full length midi but it's also got this like straight non-pleated bit i'm so obsessed i think it's beautiful i love it and then they were the first things that caught my eye and as i kept going just came across more 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 insane things i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of a like a grandma grandma top and this one it's got the frills it's like in a blue satin screaming so good and then this like butterfly top i had i'd seen it earlier and then as i was checking it out they told me i could get one more piece for free and so it came back it's got it does have a quite a large stain on the front but i'm not really a big fan of the gray anyway so i was thinking when i get back home i'll dye it i'll dye it a color maybe maybe black i think that would look so cute and it's so iconic so good so good Okay, and then the final, final item is this, like, suede jacket in this fantastic pink. I think I need to get it dry cleaned, so I haven't washed it yet. But I've never really, I've never owned a jacket like this. I normally just wear jumpers. I mean, in Australia, you don't really need anything more than that. And... Um, it's giving it's giving I love it but yes that was my haul I'm not sure if you're gonna be as impressed as I was about it but I'm ecstatic I'm truly ecstatic I it was fantastic so good okay sorry for going on too long about that but it just it had to be done it had to be done anyway I also recently well I bought it because I was coming, I was going to do my solo travel and I bought the Kobo Clara 2E to do some, some reading because I've been, recently I've been really into audiobooks, but they normally like don't have, they don't have all the books that I want to be reading and I don't like reading on my phone or my laptop particularly much. And I mean, physical books, yeah, they're great. Um, but not necessarily when I'm traveling. And so I thought I would invest, invest. And literally best purchase of my entire life. It is so good. I've just been breezing through books, especially when I was traveling by myself. I would like finish half a book on the train, then half a book at like lunch and then move on next book, like breezing through them. Um, now that now that I'm back with my family, I've been I've been neglecting the books a little bit, but still every night been going through. And the last book that I read was The History of Wolves, and I loved it. It was so good. It's 
it's just like my favorite kinds of books are ones when like the craziest thing just happens and multiple times my jaw dropped throughout that book it was it was incredible yeah really good um and now I'm reading Pachinko which again jaw is dropping easily once a chapter it's kind of about like four four generations of this family and obviously if you're getting through a whole generation you are hitting the major key points of people's lives which are shocking sometimes and it's just a beautifully written book and it's really interesting it's I'm almost finished I'm almost finished um but I kind of don't I don't want to be finished I really liked it my friend told me that there's a new show out um like about the book um on apple tv so i'm adding that to my watch list sorry for this kind of crazy format today i know it's not like normal it's a bit all over the place but i hope that you enjoyed seeing what i've been thinking about and been working on and what i bought and what i've been reading i'd love to know what you're reading what you're working on please let me know I'd be super interested. Also, if you're in the Netherlands and want to do some knitting together, I would be so keen. Please let me know. Thank you for watching and see, see you later.